Hey there, it's Andy Piper here, and um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the VO Discovery USB microscope, which I got yesterday, looks like this. It's a, it's a microscope, basically, that you can plug into your computer's USB port and take pictures and record video. We reviewed this, I think, on the Gadget Show um, in the UK a couple of weeks ago, and I had a chance to get some um, free gadgets recently, so I decided I'd uh, pick up one of these. And having checked that it was Mac compatible, um, which it is, and I'll um, talk a little bit about that in a second. So here's the microscope. It's a couple of inches in size, and on the end there's uh, actually a little plastic cap for, which protects the, the lens. And inside you can just see there there are actually four LEDs which you can light up using the software. So it's a 1.3 megapixel camera with a 20 to 200 times zoom factor in there. Uh, you can only get the maximum zoom, the 200 times zoom, if you're shooting at 640 by 480 resolution. But on the software there's a little drop down which lets you adjust the resolution. It's on a, an adjustable base, which um, has got this little screw for um, fixing it. So this is an adjustable metal arm that it sits on. And on top here there's a little adjustment which is for manually adjusting the focus when you're using the, the camera. On the side, there's a, a little button which is for um, making the shutter go off to take a still photo, although you can also do that in the software. So, so that's, that's the microscope. So let's have a look at how to install the software for, um, for Mac. What we need to do first of all is go and get the Mac software. So that's on vouk.com. And if you go to the support section, and then the download center, and then the product drivers, find the directory for the VMS001 USB microscope, and then the files we want are the VMS001 Mac driver, and I actually didn't find the instructions for Mac driver installation um, were correct, so if you just download the microcapture.pdf, which is more up to date, and matches the date of the Mac driver, you'll notice that they're both on the 23rd of December then um, the microcapture.pdf contains information about how to install so when you've downloaded that you end up with this RAW file and then if you unzip that RAW file you end up with the directory which contains two more zip files one of them's a QuickTime component just going to un unpack, and then the other one is the actual application. Now in both cases, I've already installed these on my system, but the the QuickTime component actually needs to go into the root directory of your hard disk library QuickTime, and then I've just dragged and dropped it straight in there. That's the same component, and that enables QuickTime to re to register and understand the camera. And then microcapture is just an application which I've installed into applications. So if I just go ahead and delete that stuff now, and then launch microcapture. I've already got the, mic the microscope plugged in. And here we go, and it's pointing right at me. And then I can adjust the camera. Like that. That's just... Um, Moving, moving it around and changing the focus. I can point it down on my keyboard as well. I can switch on the, the LED on the microscope by pressing that button there. So now things are a bit more lit up. Switch it off again. This, port, this button will actually let me capture a screenshot. Right click. Let's capture the screenshot, and then this one would actually let me record some video. And uh, that's about all there is to it. It's a, it's a fun little toy, really. Um, I think the only couple of complaints I have are to do with the software for the Mac, which obviously came along after the Windows software. The problems are that, first of all, it saves all of the images that it takes to the root directory of the hard drive, which I think is just wrong. It should at least be in the home directory, if not configurable. The 
other problem is that when it's plugged in, it kind of takes the place of the eyesight, which has the advantage that you can use it with Photo Booth, but it also has the disadvantage that when you start Photo Booth or iMovie to capture some film, then it can't actually see the eyesight anymore. Um, you have to unplug the camera and restart your software, which is kind of annoying. I think the Windows software has some additional image adjustments, um, like brightness and contrast that you can make, which you can't do on the Mac software. Yeah, kind of fun, and it gets a big thumbs up from me.